Welcome to my YouTube channel, Marie's Country Life. Hello everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate how to can apples. These apples are from our orchard. As you can see, these apples are not perfect. Some have bad spots, some have bug bites, but they are organic. They are not sprayed chemically. And even if they have bad spots, bug bites, you can still can them as long as you make the apples clean and remove all those bad spots. And cutting the apples into quarter sizes or smaller sizes makes it easier for boiling or for cooking process. And after cutting the apples into slices, make sure that you rinse the cut apples or the sliced apples and drain them and put them in a cooking pot. For an 8-quart cooking pot full of cut apples, put 2 cups of water to soften or cook the apples. Set the heat on high and wait for it to boil. For canning applesauce, you will need regular quart canning jars, or you can also use a wide mouth canning jars. Before you wash any jars, make sure that you check the jars thoroughly. Make sure that there are no nicks or cracks on the jars. Feel the lips or the rims of the jars with your fingers. If you feel any nicks, cracks, or something that catches or bumpy on the rims, or any obvious cracks on the jars, please discard those jars. Please don't use those jars because they will break during the boiling process and they will not seal. After checking or inspecting the canning jars, wash them thoroughly with soap and water, preferably with warm or hot water. After washing the jars, place them in an oven. Set the temperature for 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius to keep the jars hot until you are ready to use them. Other canners say that jar sterilization is optional, especially if you do the canning process for at least 10 minutes or more, the jars will be sterilized as well. So in the case of canning applesauce, I don't need to sterilize the jars because canning applesauce requires at least 25 minutes of boiling process. But if you want the extra step to sterilize the canning jars, it is perfectly fine. For sterilizing the jars, boil in a big pot and submerge the canning jars depending on how many fits in the pot and let the jars sit in the boiling water for 10 minutes. After you finish sterilizing the jars, remove them safely from the boiling water with hot water inside to keep the jars hot or warm until you are ready to fill the jars with applesauce. You can also wash the jars in a dishwasher. Set the wash cycle on high heat and keep the jars inside the dishwasher to keep them warm or hot until you are ready to fill the jars with applesauce. So this is another way to sterilize the canning jars. The jar washing and sterilizing can be done while you are preparing the apples or waiting for it to soften. But it is much better if you have the jars washed and sterilized ahead of time, ready to be filled, hot or warm in the dishwasher or oven. As for the canning rings, they can be washed manually with soap and water. No need to sterilize them. Or you can wash the rings together with the canning jars in the dishwasher. The canning lids must be washed only by hand using warm water, no dish soap needed. After washing, place the canning lids in a small pot with water. On a stove, let the water heat up and bubble up for a little bit, but don't boil for too long, only about a minute or so. Boiling the canning lids for too long can potentially damage the rubber gasket as some non-brand canning lids tend to have weaker rubber gasket that could potentially separate from the lid itself if you boil for too long. Heating up the canning lids is better done when you are about to put the lids on the jars, so the lids are still warm. Keeping the lids hot helps the gasket stick to the jars better. Back to the cooking apples in the pot. Check to see if it's boiling and if the apples are soft enough to mash or strain. Once the apples are soft, let it sit for a few minutes to cool off before feeding it through the food strainer for pureeing. Applesauce making has been made easy with the use of modern tools instead of the old school way of mashing it manually by hand or the use of small crank masher. We are blessed to have this Victoria food strainer and applesauce maker. We use this handy dandy food mill every time we make applesauce and tomato sauce. With Victoria food strainer, I don't have to remove the apple cores and skin, so it helps save time. After the cooked, soft apples have cooled off a little bit, using a heat-resistant cup, feed it through the food mill, and by using the crank, the softened apples are pureed, and apple cores and skin are extruded at the same time. 
Make sure that you install the food mill properly so it is stable on the edge of a table as you turn the crank back and forth. A good sized bowl is placed under the spout to catch the apple sauce. The elongated red thing is like a pestle and you can use to push the softened apples into the hole. It is very useful. If it is your first time using this kind of food mill or strainer, it can be tiring on the arm as you crank the handle back and forth, but you will get used to it. Think of it as, as part of your arm exercise, and you will be happy to see the applesauce as it comes out of the strainer filling the bowl. So I think going through the effort is worth it. A spatula comes handy in scraping the applesauce, as sometimes it gets clogged as it comes out of the strainer. So keep in mind to have all the things you need within your reach so you can just grab them as you need them. As the applesauce comes out and fills the bowl, you also need to check the other end of the food strainer as the extruded apple core, seeds, stem, and skin get extracted. You will need a small bowl to catch these extruded pieces. Don't throw the extruded pieces as you can feed it through the strainer one more time and get some more applesauce out of the extruded core and seeds. Applesauce making can be a fun family activity. If you have children, let them help you with the cranking or turning the handle part. Children like to help. At least in my home, if my children saw me making applesauce, they are drawn to the cranking part and they always volunteer to do it. Sometimes they argue who get to crank first and who can crank more. Just make sure that your children are safe when you allow them to help you, especially if the applesauce is still hot as it can burn them. Never! Never leave them unattended when they are helping you when you are making applesauce. Just remember, a family that makes applesauce together enjoys eating it whenever. After the apples have been pureed and made into sauce and the extruded pieces have been strained out, use a spatula to scrape the remaining sauce on the strainer. And it is now time to add sugar. But first, taste the applesauce. If you think it's too sour, you can add more sugar to make it more sweet. Or if you want a not-so-sweet applesauce, you can just put less sugar. My typical way is to put between 2-4 to four cups of sugar in a medium-sized mixing bowl full of applesauce. Depending on the original taste of the applesauce, sometimes the apples are more sweet, sometimes it's more bland. I prefer using the organic Florida crystal sugars in pudding or mixing in my applesauce. Sometimes I use sucanat or turbinado sugar. A regular white sugar is super fine and extra sweet, so be mindful on what kind of sugar you mix into your applesauce. I also add a little bit of pink salt, about half a teaspoon pink salt into the applesauce to enhance the sweetness and flavor of the applesauce. This is optional of course, but you can try. It's now time to get the hot or the warm jars to fill them with applesauce. A canning funnel is helpful in filling the jars with applesauce as it prevents mess on the jars. If you don't have a funnel, make sure you are extra careful in filling the jars so as not to put sauce on the rim or the lip area of the jars. Fill the jars with applesauce carefully. Make sure that you leave a headspace about an inch below the opening, the rim or the lip area of the jar. The sauce must be neck level of the jars to give room for boiling and air suction during the sealing process. After filling the jars with applesauce, use a damp washcloth or clean damp paper towel to wipe the jar rims. Make sure you wipe the rim area of the jars thoroughly to remove any applesauce or sugar grain or any debris that got on the jar rims. When you wipe each time, use the clean portion of the washcloth each time you wipe a jar rim or a different jar so as not to transfer any debris onto the other jars. Small pieces of anything left on the jar rims can prevent the jars from sealing, so please wipe the jars clean and cautiously. After wiping the jar rims, place the warm or hot canning lids on the jar mouths. Using a magnetic lid lifter or a metal tongs, remove the canning lids from the hot water. In this video sample, when I can peaches, I used the metal tongs. If the lids are not too hot, you can use your clean fingers to position the lids on the rims properly. After putting the lids on the jar mouths, screw on the canning rings tight but not too tight. You don't want to crank it down so tight that the lid cannot vent. As the jar is heating up in the canner, it's going to vent out underneath that lid. Oxygen is expelled from the jar. So screw on the lids tight but not too tight. 
You can also use a canning band tool like a torque wrench that helps tighten the canning rings or bands just right. If you don't have one, it's okay. Just use your hand and make sure it's tight enough but not too tight. At this point, the applesauce in jars is ready for water bath canning. Place all the jars with applesauce in a canning rack. A typical and regular canning kit has 7 quart jars capacity rack. Most of the time, I can outside on our deck using our propane burner stove as canning makes the house more hot in the summer with all the steam and heat. But it's fine inside during the winter. But be very careful if you can on a glass top stove because depending on the weight of the pot with water, the jars and all, it can break your glass top stove. Fill the canner with warm water. Set the heat on low medium to make the water warm but not boiling hot so as not to break the jars when you submerge them into the pot of water. At this point, the jars with applesauce, depending on how long the jars have sat and cooled off, you don't want to submerge them in hot boiling water. Extreme temperature contrast can break the jars. It is better to place the cooled or warm jars with warm water at the same time and then turn the heat up so they both can heat up at the same time. Please use your judgment when doing this part. In water bath or water boiling process, you need to add more water into the canning pot to cover the jars completely with water. The jars must be submerged in water an inch or two more above the lids. Cover the pot and turn the heat on high setting and wait for the water to boil. Once the water boils vigorously, lower the heat to medium and set the timer for 20 minutes. If you live below 20,000 feet elevation and if you use pint jars, you would only need 15 minutes boiling process. Since my house where I live, we live on a hill, so I typically water boil at around 25 or 27 minutes because we live on more than 1,000 feet elevation. You will need to add another 5 more minutes to the standard boiling process which is 20 minutes if you live between 1,001 feet and 3,000 feet elevation, making it 25 minutes boiling process. And then above 3,001 feet to 6,000 feet elevation, you add another 5 minutes, it makes 30 minutes boiling process. Above 6,000 feet elevation, you will need to process for 35 minutes and so on and so forth. The higher the elevation, the longer time it takes to boil. Make sure that you check the boiling pot once in a while so the water does not overboil or waste the water. Make sure that there is still 1-2 to two inches of water above the jar to maintain the process. Once the boiling process is done, turn off the stove and let the jars sit in the canner for a few minutes for the boiling water to settle down or stop completely. After that, you can safely open the canning pot lid. Be careful though and open only the lid slowly and away from your face so the steam won't burn your face. Gently but securely, lift the canning rack using a pair of mittens or a pot holder to lift the canning rack. I usually use a pot holder and a pair of metal tongs to lift one side of the rack and a pot holder on the other side. And sometimes I use pot holders on both ends if I know it's safe enough to lift the canning rack. Most canning racks have side metal slots where you can sit the entire rack with the jars in it and let them cool off naturally. So basically the rack is just sitting or hanging in the canner. Another way to do it is to completely remove the canning rack with the jars and let them set aside to cool off. Either way, it can be done. It just depends on how many batches do you process that day. You can cover the jars with a towel to prevent drastic temperature change or draft, or you can just use the lid of the pot to cover the jars. But, for the sake of this video, I want to show you the lids as they pop and make sounds. It is important that you let the jars cool off naturally. Never. Do not press the canning lids down while it is cooling off. Once the jars start to cool off, you will hear the metal lids popping sounds. The hot pressure inside makes popping sounds as it is sealing the jars. When you hear the popping sound, it indicates that the jars have sealed. Listen to this sound that most canners love to hear after a canning process. It's the sound of success. Yay! Success! Okay, the canning process is done. The jars have cooled off. 
After the canning or the boiling process, make sure that you wait for the jars to cool naturally. Make sure that it cools off naturally for at least 12 hours. And then you can check the canning lids using your fingers. Gently touch the middle part of each lid to see if it gives or if you feel a bulging spot in the middle part that is raised up a little bit. It means that the jar did not seal. Okay? Again, gently touch the middle part. If, it, if it's raised up, it means that it did not seal correctly. You can do a few things if you notice that there are unsealed jars. You can either reprocess the content by transferring the apple sauce into a different jar using a different lid. And then you can do the boiling process again. Or you can eat the content inside the unsealed jar immediately. You can also keep it in the refrigerator. It will keep in the fridge for a few weeks before it goes bad. And then after checking the jars for seal, you can safely remove the canning rings or bands. This is called a band or a ring. Some people don't remove the rings, but I do because I reuse the rings. Unless if you sell these applesauce or whatever you can, you keep the bands on. It is good also to rinse the jars after removing the rings because if you don't, it will get rusty around here and also the bands or the rings will get rusty. And make sure that when, before you put the rings back on, if you decide to put these back on, make sure that you rinse it, including the rims and the rings and the jars and make sure that they are dry before you put the rings or the bands back on because sometimes the content inside especially if you're canning juice or applesauce or anything sweet and fruity the juice gets released and it's just when it's boiling you will have some here on the lips or or on the jars itself so it happens during the boiling process and it gets sticky so rinsing the jars before storing them is highly recommended and after removing the canning rings wait for at least 12 hours again before storing the jars this is if you don't sell the jars or if you don't sell your canned items you can leave the rings off of the jars you can just save it like this without the rings on after you wash, after you rinse, after you let them dry, after you remove the canning rings, wait for at least 12 hours and check again. Check the jars again. Make sure that the jars are still sealed because sometimes after you remove the canning bands or the canning rings, the pressure inside gets released from inside, especially if the jars have cracks or nicks on the rims that you just didn't notice before. And, you know, again, you can just transfer the content to a different jar and reprocess it. And of course, don't forget to write the name of the fruit that you just canned. For this one here, it's applesauce, and I canned in September. After you rinse and after you let it dry, you can use a marker or you can use a label, a label, a sticker label that you can just write on it or you can print also. So writing a date or even a month or the, and the name of the fruit that you just canned. Make sure that there's a label, okay? And... After writing the labels or after putting the labels, you can store the canned applesauce in a box or in a pantry or in a safe place, especially with a temperature that's stable in a room that the temperature does not fluctuate from hot to cold, cold to hot. It must be in a temperature stable room. Okay, The temperature of the room must be stable and does not get direct sunlight because direct sunlight can damage the, the rings, the uh, lids. It can deteriorate it, so avoid direct sunlight. The content inside the, inside the jars, the applesauce, can be eaten or consumed months later and even up to several years, even up to five or more than five years. It will keep in the jars for a long time, for many years, as long as the jars are still intact and the seals are intact as well. But you do need to check them once in a while. You do need to check the canned fruits or veggies just to make sure that they're still in good condition and in good state. And you will know if something went bad because you will see abnormal discoloration inside. And if you do notice mold growth inside the jar and discoloration, dump the bad contents right away, okay? Dump it out right away. Do not eat them because it's not good. It's uh, hazard or it's uh, not good for your health. So do not eat them. It's uh, You have that botulism. It's not good. So any discoloration, any abnormal 
look inside the jar, dump it out. Don't eat it. Okay? Once you've emptied the jars, or once you've eaten the contents of the canning jars, don't throw the jars away because the canning jars are still reusable as well as the canning rings. So again, recycle or reuse the canning jars as long as they are still good and there's no cracks or nicks. And also the canning rings, as long as they're not rusty, you can still use them. The regular canning lids, you cannot reuse them unless you are using the reusable canning lids. So again, the canning jars and the canning rings, you can reuse them when you do your next canning session. Okay? That's it. Canning process is not hard. It's actually fairly easy. It does take time though. But it is another way to preserve fruits just like this applesauce. Just make sure that you have the right material, the tools, the ingredients that you need. And of course, you have the time to do it when you do the canning. And make sure that you follow the proper canning process, the procedure the canning um, method to ensure great results. And of course, always remember that in canning, the food safety is your priority. Food safety and of course, your safety as a canner. They are your priority, okay? Thank you for watching. I hope that this video is helpful to you. Feel free to share this video with your families and friends. Happy canning!